D-Lab Electronics in this video I'm going to introduce you to the Micronaut, a preamp tube microphonic analyzer. It can detect problems in preamp tubes whereas tube checkers don't have a chance. Let me show you what it's all about. Well here's the prototype unit for the preamp tube microphonic analyzer. I built it in a Heathkit HD15 phone patch. So this was just an experiment to see if I could watch microphonic actions out of preamp tubes rather than putting them in amplifiers to test it. So here is a 12X7. Plug him in. See my selector is at 12X7. The current will come up. There's outputs on the rear of this unit that you could hook either to an amp or a scope. And you could tap on the tube and see if that thing was microphonic. Okay. This is an input jack, so you can actually run a signal through the tube. And I thought, well, this is really cool. It works well. How about we expand on that? So I installed a 7-pin socket so that I could do 6AV6s and 6AT6s. And that worked well, too. Then I thought, you know what? It's time to really expand on this idea. And that is when the Micronaut was born. So this machine can do much more and has a lot more flexibility than the initial prototype. All right, here is the D-Lab Micronaut. It's a dynamic preamp tube analyzer. Its purpose is to detect microphonic tubes before they are used in amplifiers. So this device can perform dynamic testing on tubes to isolate microphonics. The common tube checker does not have this capability. Tube checkers cannot detect microphonic tubes and therefore they always pass the quality test. So here's a much better approach than swapping out tubes on your vintage amp causing socket wear. So the Micronaut is designed to check a series of tubes. It has a 7-pin socket, an 8, and a 9. The 7-pin is for 6 AV6s. 6BK6s and 6AT6s. The 8 pin is for 6SL7s and 6SN7s. And then the 9 pin will do your 12AX7, 12AT7, and a 12AU7. Everything is determined by the selector switch. Rather than calling out the tubes, I decided to put it in milliamp settings. So the 1 milliamp setting is for your 6AV6, 6BK6, 6SL7, and a 12AX7. The 10 milliamp is for the 6AT6, 6SN7, and a 12AT7. And the 20 milliamp is for a 12AU7. Then, if you notice, we have this thing called VB. That's variable bias. So this will allow you to dial in the current setting for use, let's say, for a 7025, a 5751, 12AY7, etc. All these tubes share the same base configuration. This function allows you to set the gain point. However, the meter calibration is not accurate. All right, let's test a 12AX7. So we are going to test a 12AX7 tube the selector switch needs to go to 1 milliamp for this test. These VU meters are calibrated to understand that 1 milliamp will give you the zero indication on the VU meters. So I'm going to plug in the tube. And while that's warming up, I'll talk about the rest of the test setup. We have a scope and an amplifier looking at triode 1 on the 12AX7. So not only will you be able to see it, you're going to be able to hear microphonics. Okay, So the tube is up, it's warmed up. You can see we're pulling current on both triode 1 and triode 2. Remember, we're just looking at side 1 at this time. So if I were to tap on the tube, look at the scope, this tube isn't too bad. Let me bring up the volume on the amp. Even though you hear that, remember, we are not injecting a signal at this point, so the grid is very sensitive. At this time, I would say this is a good 12AX7 tube. 
Now I'm going to pull out the 12AX7 and I'm going to put in a 6SL7 which shares the same 1 milliamp setting as the 12AX7. So now I have the 6SL7 installed. Same thing. Let's take a look at the scope when I tap on the tube. You can see a lot of activity. Look at that. She's going nuts. Look at the meter. This tube has issues. Let's see what it sounds like on the amp just for the fun of it. Have you heard that on your guitar amps before? Now you have a way to detect that problem before you install that tube in your amp. Alright, now I'm going to take this one out. We'll put in a known good 6SL7. Wait to see the current on the meters. There she comes. Let's tap on this tube. Look at the scope. No activity. Bring up the volume. Just like the 12X7, hear a little bit of that. But it's nothing like that lightning storm that you saw a few minutes ago. Now, I have a little looper hooked up. We're going to inject sound through that tube that you can listen to on your amplifier. Here we go. So this gives you a, a way that you can also listen to your tube as you play through it and qualify a tube, say you have tongue soles versus JJ's and you want to hear the tone quality of the tube, here it is with a micronaut. Alright, now we'll test a 12AT7. Our current has to go to 10 milliamps for this tube. Plug it in, wait for it to warm up. Now one thing that's nice about these meters is it shows you the gain of that tube. So if you're looking to balance a 12AT7 for, say, a phase inverter, this is a good indication that this tube is healthy on both triodes. Okay, let's take a listen to it from Microphonics. Pretty clean tube. All right, now let's go to a 12AU7. So you simply unplug it, 20 milliamp position now, for the 12AU7, which is used in the SVT amps. Wham! 12AU7, since it draws more current, you'll see the meter swing and then return. Alright, let's see what it sounds like. Once again, good tube. That's a brand new tongue sole, by the way, anyway, so we would expect that to be good. Nice and balanced. All right, now let's take a look at the variable bias. All right, here we go. All right, in this case, we are testing a 12AY7, which this tester was not set up for, just like I didn't set the game for a 7025 or a 5751. We'll plug in the 12AY7. We're in variable bias. Now, if I were to say I want to check that at one milliamp, like a 12AX7, you'll see we have way too much gain. So we go to variable bias, and I can dial that right in to my zero point. But keep in mind, it is not calibrated, but it still gives you the opportunity to check these other tubes. Let's see if this one is microphonic. Nope. Good tube. All right, next, let's put in a 7-pin tube. I have some 6AV6s and 6AT6s that we can test. Alright, we're going to start with a 6AV6. I have an old Philco that was new, old stock, in the box. There she is. Now, for the 7-pin tubes, we only use side A. Side B is not obviously going to be used because it only has one triode. Okay, so you should see that meter come up. Assuming the tube's alive, there she comes. Kind of slow. 
don't see any activity. But, but she kind of rings a little bit. But I don't see much activity on the scope. But it still may be too sensitive of a tube to use in a guitar amp. All right, let's try a 6AT6. All right, so I found a very old, crusty Delco 6AT6. I'm sure this thing will not perform the greatest, but it would be a chance for us to see the microphonics. We're at the 10 milliamp scale. You see it jumped right up there on current. Let's take a listen to it. Oh yeah. She's got a lot going on. A very microphonic, unusable tube. Alright, so how fun is that? We finally have a device that you can use to determine if a tube is microphonic without having to continuously plug them in and out of your vintage amps and wearing out those tube sockets. The Micronaut is still under development, but it's close. I plan to expand this model, but currently this one will handle most of the main violators. Your 12AX7, 12ATs, and of course, the 6SL7, which you all know is always microphonic.